From the VR Proud Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist Jesse Gunkel. Thanks for joining us on this stream. We want to keep everybody updated as to what's happening this evening and early tomorrow morning. Right now, we do have a couple light showers across the capital area and nothing expected to be much. And really, in fact, we're not seeing much of anything except for just the roads becoming a little bit wet out there. We did have a flood advisory. It's still in place until 1115 this evening. That's for portions of Ascension, Livingston, East Baton Rouge, and portions of Iberville Parish. Main reason was because at one point we did have some rainfall rates at about an inch per hour, and the concern is obviously for more small stream flooding, maybe even some road flooding out there, as we'll see a little bit of ponding. Obviously, we still are under the spotlight now for more heavy rainfall and just because again a lot of areas that water has not receded yet so it's still an issue in there in fact a lot of our ditches still have some standing water so a lot to watch and monitor as we move into the overnight hours you can see that we've got a couple heavier pockets a few miles to the west a little bit closer to Acadiana right along the Atchafalaya River that's all heading towards I-10 so if you're making the trip back or forth you may run into a little bit of rainfall but the big story moving forward is what's happening I'm I'm just going to show you again. This is an aerial flood advisory until 1115 and most likely after that they will allow it to expire. So really only about another 20 minutes. But this is the big story as you see on our exclusive live Viper radar that we are watching another pocket or band of showers and storms out there. And if we zoom in just a little bit, you can see that it's holding together and you see all that lightning in the mix, kind of an indication that this is still a very strong thunderstorm and most likely will produce some very heavy rainfall. There's a flash flood warning now for right along the coast, and that's again for Calcasieu Parish and Vermilion Parish, and that's south of Lake Charles. You can see all that heavy rainfall expected to move inland and then drive through the western half of the state. But as you see the forward kind of momentum of this system, it does look like it's going to track a little bit further towards the east and should be arriving on our doorstep sometime after 3 a.m. So that's at least a decent window. That means for about four or five hours, you can catch a little bit of sleep. But what I do suggest is making sure your cell phone is charged. If you do fall asleep, have it on the nightstand next to you and make sure the volume is up so you can hear those alerts overnight. Just in case if that rain comes down and it comes at a pretty steady pace, well, we may see some more possible flooding here just because the water is already high in a lot of locations. All of our drainage basins and reservoirs, all of our ditches are still full of water at this point. The ground is still extremely saturated, so it's really not going to take much. When you start to get a little bit of rainfall coming down at a quick chop, well, guess what? All of that water has to go somewhere. So even if it falls in maybe in the street in front of you or if it falls back into maybe a parking lot, that's all going to go into our local bayous and then quickly push downstream into one of our main arteries. So again, we're watching that very closely as you see moving forward that rain should be moving in. We still are underneath a flash flood watch. They've extended it for another day until tomorrow evening. It looks like we may actually have two more rounds of rain before we eventually dry up. And that's the concerning part out there. So because of that additional threat of rain and the possibility of more flash flooding, they have extended it. Potentially, they could even extend it into Friday morning at this point. Keeping an eye on the rivers. Right now, things are shaping up for the Comey River at Jure Road as water levels are actually dropping and should be back to below flood stage by tomorrow. Amy at Dedham Springs right now at 27.87. Expected only climb to about 28.5, what keeps us in minor flooding. Amy at Bayou Mancheck, and that seems to be the highest point or the highest point right now. Expect moderate flooding in the area. They've also right along Perkins Road, old Perkins Road, excuse me, they've closed the bridge because of that current high water. Uh, the original forecast, we're looking for 13 feet or possibly above. So right now, that's actually looking a little bit better, the current estimates, but that again could change. All of this is subject to change depending on what we see this evening and early tomorrow with rainfall. Because again, you got to remember, the more that moves into our local bayous and streams, well, that's eventually going to allow those river levels to climb. 
uh, across our viewing area. So here's the current future track out there. You can see that line of thunderstorms moving through Acadiana, reaching there about 3 o'clock in the morning. And then by the time we get to early morning, you see those storms pretty intense, still around 6 a.m., kind of moving somewhat slowly out there. And you can see the showers quickly jump. I still think, again, this whole model run hasn't been updated quite yet. We're still waiting for it to generate the latest model run, but I do believe for us, we're looking at a window between three and six for some heavy rainfall across the area. And then I do believe the other concern is once we get past that point, as the system starts to lift north and up towards the east, you can see how these showers start to move back in from New Orleans and Belle Chase back towards the Hammond area. We could start to see some of that rain move back westward, and that's where we could start to see some higher totals. And if it stays stationary, just like the other day, well, then those rain totals quickly climb. So again, a lot to watch out as we head into your day tomorrow because again, there is that possibility that it could stall out at time. So again, because of that threat, we sit under a moderate risk for excessive rainfall. As you notice, again, the, we'll see rain rates at a rather high rate, maybe about an inch or two per hour in localized pockets. We could even see higher amounts. And as you notice also, as we continue to move forward, You'll see here that, again, these are the current estimates, but they could jump two to four for most of the area. But again, locally, we could see some higher amounts in some pockets, about one to three between Ascension Parish and New Orleans. And notice down towards the southwest, five plus for a lot of areas. And the concern is obviously just along the coastline. And once again, for the Lake Charles area that already saw about 14, nearly 15 inches of rainfall on Monday. I also want to point out it's going to be a little bit breezy out there. And because, well, everything is so saturated, the ground is still a little bit swampy at this point. Tree limbs are still heavy from all that rainfall. A little bit of wind out there is never a good thing. Wind advisory in place until tomorrow evening until 7 p.m., especially for the coast. I also want to point out that because of those winds that are coming off the Gulf of Mexico, that onshore flow is going to continue to push a lot of that water inland. And the concern is that we could see some coastal flooding along the lakes. The other concern is that water moving in, or excuse me, those winds from the southeast Guess what? That southerly breeze is going to continue to push that water inland, not allowing that water to drain into the lakes. So everything that's coming down the Amy River, everything is coming down the Tikva and the Chifuncta Rivers. Well, that's going to get that's going to run into almost a dam because of that water pushing back towards the north and northwest. So again, it's not going to allow that water to drain as quickly as we would like because of that southerly breeze. So a lot of factors coming into the equation, and that's why it gets a little bit concerning that we may see some more possible flooding as we move into your Thursday and maybe even early Friday at this point. So again, we're watching that closely. I do want to point out, at least for tonight, it doesn't look like we've got severe weather, but there could be some heavy pockets in the mix, and that's just something worth watching at this point. And again, the next couple days, obviously, we've got rain tomorrow, the possibility of more flooding, the chance for some heavy rainfall heading into the morning hours of Friday, and then finally some sunshine. We're dry Saturday, and it looks like we may see a nice long stretch, so we'll have plenty of time to dry out across the capital area. So just stay alert this evening. Have multiple ways to receive warnings. Make sure the phone is on and it's charged. You can download our app. It's great. It's a useful tool if you need sandbag locations, if you need to know where there are road closures, if you need to know where there are school closures or government entities, anything like that. It's all on our website, BeerProud.com, and on our app. So make sure you follow us. We've also got the latest information on social media. You can go to uh, my Twitter account, which is at Jesse Gunkel, or you can go to Facebook and just search for meteorologist Jesse Gunkel for the very latest information. We've got complete steam, or excuse me, we've got complete team coverage through the overnight hours and throughout tomorrow morning. Ashley Ruiz will be covering the morning hours, and I'll be following it from here and also from home. So again, we'll get you through this storm. We'll make sure you stay safe. Thanks for joining us, and if you have any questions, please drop us a line.